Hi, and welcome to another Open Source Silicon Stream, number seven. And this uh, this one today is, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to just focus on this new news, new news, this news from uh, eFabulous, who have very sadly shut down. And I just wanted to spend five or ten minutes talking about that. Um, I'm not going to uh, say much more about our future plans for um, Tiny Tape Out or speculate on what caused it or what might happen in the future. Uh, if you want to know more about that, then uh, follow Tiny Tape Out on LinkedIn. We'll be posting uh, more information as we get it. And again, for Tiny Tape Out customers, you'll be receiving an email from us shortly with more information. So... I think I one one thing I wanted to do was to uh, share my screen here. And talk a little bit about uh, my history, uh, my experience with uh, the open source silicon movement. This is my first ever chip, and I still kind of can't believe it's true. You know, I we've been now living in a in a world where more and more people can get involved in semiconductors, and I often think back to how Arduino kind of revolutionised and democratised micro controller access my the first time i used a microcontroller i had to use an expensive uh, programmer and it was very difficult and now it's very very easy and many more people do it um and we had the same thing with fpgas and although i as an electronic engineer i used a lot of chips i never really thought that i would ever make one and that changed when i first met tim edwards who many of you know, who used to work for eFabulous. And he presented an open source chip that was using the Pico RV32 core from Claire Wolf. And opened my eyes to the possibility that it could be true. And I downloaded, I think it was called Qflow at the time and did my first layout. Um, but that was pretty much where I was intending to leave it. And then there was this um announcement from uh tim ansel different tim in 2020 about the sky 130 pdk so the my chip design that i'd done my basic one with qflow was with i think the oklahoma state open source pdk so it couldn't be manufactured and the, the big thing here was uh, there was this funding from Google to do free tape outs. Um, eFabulous was going to run the shuttles along with Skywater. Uh, there was this new tool called Open Lane that bundled up Open Road and a bunch of other stuff. And that was really the kind of the beginning of it all for me. And I immediately jumped on that. And thanks to Google and eFabulous, I think I probably taped out at least 10 of my own chips. I was involved in every shuttle. Um, I started the Zero to ASIC course, and that kind of let me go independent. So I was able to focus on open source silicon full time. And the entire way, I've been working with eFabless and the guys there um, to get access to silicon. So there's my uh, first tape out here, right from the early days. I was always amazed at how much space there was. So I, um, you know, that was the MPW. Yeah, that was the first tape out, yeah, um, with my clock on it. But I, yeah, realized straight away that um, there was a lot of space in 10 square millimeters and we should try to use it as, as well as we could. So from that moment on, it was, um, for me, like trying to get more people involved, spread the word and also like make the most of this very precious resource. So here's a closer up of that first chip. Thanks to Maximo for the uh, photography. 
and text plane for the die image there. So we had quite a few designs on there. Um, the community grew very quickly. Efablis was also uh, running the open source Silicon Slack. And actually, the, it's a good thing to point out that we now have the Fossey matrix. Um, so Leo Moser has been posting about that on LinkedIn. If you're not following Leo Moser, um, find him on your social networks. And one of his most recent posts is about the sign up link for the Fossey chat. So that's where that's going to be the new hub uh, because the the open source Silicon Slack is going to, after Efablis stopped paying for it, which I assume has already happened, we're going to lose all the history there. So work is being done to preserve the history and move it all over to this new place. And that's where you should join. Um, Efablis launched Chip Ignite. So that was the commercial version of the uh, the lottery system. And that was the system that we ended up using for Tiny Tape Out when that, when that happened a couple of years later. It wasn't all uh, glorious and uh, fun. And we had uh, the first chips, you probably all remember, had like some uh, dramatic problems with the pad frame. Um, the GPIO configuration that made the first chips very, very difficult to get working. I was one of the few people to uh, get working, and it was actually uh, Sylvain Minot that really helped me do that. And that was kind of also the beginning of our silicon journey together. Now Sylvain's very involved in Tiny Tape Out and is responsible for a lot of the architectural decisions we've made there. And we had these fantastic tape outs full of great designs uh, filling up whole wafers. Actually, I think I've got one here. It's going to be it's going to go down in in history let me see if i can open it without uh, dropping it on the floor with shaking hands <laughs> so this is a full wafer from the the mpws the reticle with uh, 40 different open source designs on there and then they were all uh, diced up. This is MPW3. I've got a copy of that. MPW3 and 4 in 2021. And this is where I introduced uh, like a more organized way of getting more uh, designs in for my course. MPW5, MPW6, and then we had the Global Foundries tape out. And the very first experimental tiny tape out was in September 2022. And that was like shortly after that, we launched the, um, the tiny tape out shuttle. I got my, yeah, and I got my first ASIC to work in 2022. So yeah, long cycle times. That's definitely something took a while to get used to with the ASIC world. We started running Tiny Tape out more regularly. And it, yeah, kicked off a, a real growing, important community uh, that eFabulous were really right in the middle of. Um, so many good people there. And as probably many of you know, I was uh, contracting with eFabulous, helping out with supporting Jeff and uh, doing training material, shooting videos, helping out with the webinars, uh, helping to grow the community, active on the Slack, that kind of stuff. Um, it's difficult to really believe that they're gone. Um, I also searched my photos for eFabulous. So I think these were... It's very MPW one. 
uh, immediately defaced with a very nice st sticker. <laughs> And, yep, moving on through the history, revision 4B. Back in the days when we got the um, the flip chip, that's not the right terminology, is it? What were they called? Um, they were like little BGAs, can't remember the package name now. And then moving on to this uh, kind of uh, development board with the... Um, STM chip underneath, can't quite remember now. Pretty difficult to get soldered. Yeah, another reminder that Tiny Tape Out would definitely not have happened without help from me, Fabulous. Not only having access to a regular, affordable shuttle. I mean, $10,000 for a shuttle doesn't sound affordable, but it's kind of four or five times cheaper than the the industry average, so really uh, very affordable. And uh, they made sure that even if we didn't fill our tiny tape out shuttles, that we wouldn't lose money. So they really kind of reduced the risk in us starting that company. And this was one of the first tiny tape out chips with the scan chain, the slow scan chain. People might remember that. That was like the very first early proof of concept. E fabulous, right in the middle there, middle of the board and middle of the community. Tiny tape out chips, more boards. And of course, there were the workshops. Um, e Fabulous probably sponsored half of the workshops that I've run, so that that meant that people would get a free tape out as part of Tiny Tape Out as part of the workshop deal. MPW7. Yeah, and as part of my course, I'm often sending out um, chips. And it's always fun to package up boards and chips and epoxy cubes and all the semiconductor swag and send it out to people. Uh, presenting at date. Fossey Foundation. And I finally got to visit eFabulous last year, and I'm super glad that I did. That was unknown to me, the last chance. Uh, really fun to meet Jeff and Mohammed and go out for a nice lunch together. That was me and Pat rolling up on eFabulous. Great photo from Pat there. Another fantastic workshop sponsored by Fabulous, held at Stanford. With all the uh, wonderful TAs. And now we're on to the, the last photos I have in the modern the modern chips. So yeah, that's kind of, I was just going to end it there really. I think, um, we couldn't have done it without you. You fabulous. Um, really best wishes to the team, not just to the U S team that I kind of met personally. I mean, I met some of the Egyptian team, Dawn, we met at free Silicon conference. Um, but many of the other, guys out there worked with who made, really made an, an impact in the, the tools that they developed and the the test harnesses and all the organizational stuff so um, go and search LinkedIn search for eFabless 
uh, send these guys some love. Uh, if you've got job openings for people who are uh, doing verification or semiconductor or EDA tool design, then bear these people in mind. Um, yeah, it's a sad loss. But I am uh, optimistic. EFAB has helped to found this movement, but we're just getting up to steam now. And I want to end um, on a positive note. Uh, we Tiny Tape Out is uh, plans to continue. Um, we still want to uh, deliver our mission of making chip design and fabrication accessible to more people. Uh, we've experienced a lot of outreach from a lot of people with a lot of resources asking how they can help. Uh, so I'm sure we're going to have some good news to share soon. Um, the next public Tiny Tape Out shuttle is going to be on IHP. That's already scheduled for later this year. Um, we have good relationships with lots of people already, and we're talking to multiple foundries already. So make sure to follow uh, Tiny Tape Outs on LinkedIn to get the latest news. And uh, join the Fossey Chat uh, Matrix server to stay up to date with all things uh, Fossey. And yeah, we'll see what happens uh, this year. I think it's going to be um, the most exciting year so far. There's um, so much going on, so much enthusiasm. Uh, people understand more than ever the importance of open source silicon and the accessibility that it offers. And um, if it's not with eFabulous, it's going to be with someone else. So stay tuned, uh, stay positive, and um, keep calm and make ASICs. So Uri put a fun, <laughs> fun uh, picture together. So just uh, we'll just end on that. If I can find it easily there we go so keep calm and make asics have a good rest of your week and uh, see you around on the various online social media bye-bye and thanks for watching